welcome dear students for this third lecture of chapter number 2 that is ecosystem i amul handore is working as assistant professor at department of zoology kthm college so let's start with lecture number 3 topic of today's discussion is marine and estuarine ecosystem let's take a brief recap of previous lecture so in previous lecture we studied introduction to aquatic ecosystem overview of types of fresh water ecosystems pond and river ecosystem abiotic factors of these two ecosystem as well as biotic factors in today's lecture the study objectives will be introduction to marine and estuarine ecosystem characteristics of the marine and estuarine ecosystem abiotic factors of these two systems and biotic factors so let's go through this flow chart once again which we have seen in last lecture so today we are going to concentrate on this marine ecosystem as well as another ecosystem that is uh, present in between these two ecosystem that is called as a estuarine ecosystem so the first aquatic ecosystem that we are going to study is marine or ocean ecosystem so we know that oceans cover 70% of the earth surface so a great area of the earth is covered by the oceans and they provide the essential nutrients required for both land and marine organisms so if we see the characteristic of these ocean ecosystem these marine or oceans are the very large reservoirs of water covering the entire earth surface they harbor more than 250000 marine species of organisms and they are one of the important source of food for humans and other organism in the form of different sea products as well as different drugs not only food and drugs but they also provide with iron phosphorus magnesium petroleum products like oil natural gas as well as they provide with sand and gravel for the human beings now there are many oceans on this planet earth and the important or the major oceans are atlantic pacific indian arctic and antarctic ocean and each ocean is a complex ecosystem now let's study the abiotic components of ocean ecosystem the first important abiotic component of ocean system is light so in the form of sunlight is the basic and most important biotic factor because energy of the light is stored in the carbon compound because whatever sunlight which is received by the plants or the oceanic plants is converted into the the food source that is a carbon compound like glucose so it plays a very important role in the process of photosynthesis so the intensity of light and turbidity of water is very important because if water is turbid then very less amount of light can penetrate in the ocean or sea second important factor is salinity that means the salt content of the ocean so the salinity of sea water is not constant but fluctuate from one place to the another place and this difference is due to the presence of dissolved salts of chlorides and sodium potassium calcium and magnesium as well as the sulfates of calcium and magnesium so all these uh, elements contribute to the salinity of the seas the third important abiotic component is temperature now that this temperature is not constant throughout the ocean but it varies with the location as well as depth of the sea and the season of that particular year so seasonal as well as daily changes occur in the temperature of the coastal water and these changes are very large in the coastal water than open sea now the coastal water means 
near to the coastline and the open sea means the deep waters. The fourth important abiotic component is pressure. Now the pressure plays a very important role because it changes to a very large extent in oceanic ecosystem than the terrestrial ecosystem because there is a large pressure of water and the depth of the sea is or ocean is also very uh, very more so that plays a very important role on the living organisms which are present in the oceans okay now this ocean ecosystem is divided into different zones so there are two major important life zones the coastal zone which is near to the coastline and this is relatively shallow water zone so water depth is low and the water is relatively warm that means temperature is high as well as it will have high nutrients and the sunlight penetration is more because the water is shallow so this becomes the zone of primary high primary productivity so the production of phytoplankton or other oceanic plants occurs more in this coastal zone then the deep sea zone is also called as open sea so it is the deepest part of the ocean away from this coastal area or also referred as a continental shelf that is nothing but the part of the continent submerged under the ocean now the open sea is further divided into three regions so if we divide it vertically there are three regions of the this open sea we will see this in the next diagram on next slide so the first zone is called as euphotic zone so this is the zone which receives abundant of sunlight and therefore there is a high photosynthetic activity second zone is called as a bathyal zone it receives less light and usually less active but there is a high geological activity and the third zone which is called as abyssal zone here light penetration stops so if we see the deep sea where light does not penetrate that zone is called as abyssal zone so this is the darker zone of the sea darkest zone ranging from 2000 to 500 meters deep now this zone has no source of energy because the sunlight cannot penetrate to this much of depth of sea this is world's largest ecological unit but is an incomplete ecosystem so let's see in this diagram abyssal zone is the deepest ocean zone where light cannot penetrate then you have the euphotic zone up to where the light penetration is very or there is a large penetration of light then you have the euphotic zone where the intermediate light is penetrating so you have the production or the productivity zone is these two zones where the light is penetrating continental shelf is the this region of the land which is under the ocean okay now let's see the biotic components of this oceanic ecosystem so the first one are producers so primary productivity of the ocean ecosystem is chiefly controlled by these producers such as it includes uh, mainly the smaller plants like green flagellates microscopic algae diatoms and other major phytoplanktons which are present in the different zones of the sea then seaweeds like brown and red algae are the one of the important primary producers because they can produce their own food by trapping the sunlight so biomass of these primary producers is low as compared to the macro consumers now let's come to the second biotic component that those are called as consumers so the consumers are nothing but the 
organisms which are dependent on the producers they are also called as heterotrophic organisms so there can be two types of heterotrophs micro heterotrophs and macro heterotrophs that means depending on their size so they occupy different levels in the food chain so the major consumers of ocean ecosystems are smaller fishes followed by mollusk crustaceans then these primary consumers so fishes mollusk and crustaceans are eaten by the secondary consumers like fishes other mollusk and echinoderms so these primary consumers are also eaten by the secondary consumers like fishes mollusk echinoderms and then you have the top carnivores which are eating these fishes mollusk and echinoderms like sharks cods halibuts and other larger mollusks like octopus squids which can eat both primary and secondary consumers so this is all about the major biotic components now the last biotic component of ocean ecosystem are obviously the decomposers or saprophytes so in a oceanic ecosystem microbes like bacteria and fungi are the important decomposers so they are actively involved in decaying the dead organic matter so everything that is dead is converted or broken down by these consumers so they act as a major decomposers of the oceans so let's look at some pictures of the organisms seen in the ocean so we can see diatoms which are microscopic organisms then dinoflagellates cyanobacteria or these are also called as blue green algae so all these are microscopic organisms then we have copepods which are nothing but zooplanktons so marine zooplanktons they, they are very small around 1 mm in size then krills which are nothing but the larvae of the prawns then you have tinophores which are nothing but the different forms of comb jellies you can come across jellyfishes so different species of jellyfishes larvae of different organisms so echinoderms mollusk crustaceans so all sort of larvae can also be the important components of this ecosystem and you can come across other zooplanktons which are specifically seen in the marine ecosystem and then you come across the largest carnivores like sharks and larger fishes okay so this is all about the oceanic ecosystem we move to the second part of today's discussion that is estuarine ecosystem so here you can see a estuary so what is estuary let's have a look so these are some other pictures so estuary is nothing but the area where the uh, your river meets with the sea so in between you have this ecosystem that is called as estuary so it involves different types like salt marsh mangrove forest so this is a type of mangrove forest plants these are the marshes so let's look at the some important characteristics of estuarine ecosystem so the most dominant feature of estuarine environment is fluctuation in salinity so the salinity is not constant it keeps on changing they are dominated by the muddy substrates so it includes the deposition of lot of mud so they are rich in organic content as well as there is accumulation of this organic content is very rich so you can see the surface water have greatest temperature and the deeper water is bit cooler so 
all the important abiotic component of estuarine ecosystem like salinity, texture of the substrate, temperature, organic matter, or available oxygen, all these are controlled by the wave action or the current of the waves of estuary. And finally, the wave action in estuaries is small. As a result, there is continuous deposition of the sediment and since there is mud in the form of the sediment, the plant can grow. So all the deep rooted plants can grow in this estuarine ecosystem. Let's see some other characteristics of estuarine ecosystem. So all the rivers and lake ultimately drain into sea. We know that all rivers and lake ultimately they meet to the sea. However, many rivers develop specialized zone before joining the sea. So the area when the river joins the ocean or sea, that area of transition is called as estuary. So estuary is nothing but a transitional zone between river and the sea. So it represents a ecotone. Ecotone is a transition area between two ecosystems. So here we have river ecosystem and a ocean ecosystem. So the transition area is called as a ecotone and therefore since it is a uh, transition area we see the features of both the ecosystem so the organisms so estuaries are considered as most productive ecosystems of the world now let's study the biotic and abiotic factors of estuarine ecosystem First, we will see the abiotic factors. So these include wave current, salinity, temperature, amount of sunlight, types of soil as well as the turbidity. So let's see the first factor that is wave action. Now since there is a movement of two currents that is estuary is nothing but an area where you have the river meeting with the sea. So you have the wave current that is formed as a result of sea as well as movement of the fresh water and to, due to this there are various variations which occur in terms of salinity the texture of the substrate that is the silt and sediment temperature organic matter as well as available oxygen so all these factors are controlled by the wave current the wave action we have already seen is very small so that due to this there is deposition of sediment and development of rooted plants which we have already discussed. Next important factor is salinity. So since it is a transition zone, Isuri is a transition zone where the fresh water meets with the salty water of sea so continuously there is change in the salinity of estuarine water. So that will depend upon even the season as well as the climatic conditions. So during rainy season when the rivers are flooded, so all the fresh water will come to the estuary area therefore salinity will decrease. If there is any storm then under such condition the salty water will enter into the estuary so the salt salinity of the estuary will increase now most in most of these cases so salinity is continuously fluctuating between high to low salinity next important factor or abiotic factor is turbidity so as the turbidity of water increase Obviously, the sunlight will not penetrate to the bottom. Therefore, the production or primary productivity of plants and other producers will decrease. So, it will result into less number of consumers that is secondary, primary or tertiary consumers. On the other hand, if there is less turbidity, the sunlight can penetrate up to the bottom. There will be more production of the producers and the ecosystem will be more healthy. 
so in in this sense turbidity decides the primary productivity of estuarine ecosystem and this turbidity also varies this turbidity is minimum near the mouth of the estuary and it increases with the distance from the inland next factor or abiotic component is temperature so since estuary water is a shallow water it does not have very high depth so that results into the quick heating of the water as well as quick cooling down of the water so the surface water will have more temperature and the deeper water will have a low temperature as well as there is seasonal variation so as per the month of the year the temperature will keep on fluctuating and you can have this curve of temperature next a biotic factor is availability of oxygen now we know that oxygen is the most important for the survival of living organisms and solubility of oxygen decreases with increase in temperature so as the temperature of water increases less oxygen can dissolve in water so, and due to the salinity of this estuarine water it heats up very quickly so that results into less oxygen dissolve in this estuarine water and that results into condition that is called as anoxic condition that means the water oxygen level is decrease and the oxygen demand of the this water is increase so oxygen is severely deplete, depleted under estuarine condition so whatever sediment which is situated at the bottom will have a low concentration of oxygen so only those organisms which can survive under low oxygen condition like shrimps or other crustaceans like crabs they can only survive in under such low oxygen conditions so if we see the overall biotic components of this estuarine ecosystem it is very it is quite rich so you have the uh, microflora in the form of microbenthos or the zooplankton phytoplankton then you have the macrofauna in the form of invertebrates like echinoderms mollusk then followed by you have the uh, larger carnivores like fishes and then you have predatory fishes which are more larger fishes followed by the even birds so these are called wader birds which feed on to the smaller fishes and crustaceans so the major biotic component of estuarine ecosystem are the producers so first of all estuarine community is a mixture of three component that is marine ecosystem fresh water ecosystem and a mixture of this is called as a brackish ecosystem so brackish water means what where you have the salt water of ocean mixed with the fresh water so due to this salinity will decrease because we know that marine water have high salinity fresh water does not have salinity so the salinity of estuarine water is intermediate between ocean and fresh water such water is called as brackish water however if we compare the biotic diversity that is living organism in estuary it is intermediate between river ecosystem and marine ecosystem okay so the major producers of the estuarine ecosystem includes four important types that is phytoplankton which are microscopic organisms then you have marsh vegetation mud flat algae so algae is the one of the important uh, producers of this estuarine ecosystem and then you have some epiphytic plants now the turbidity plays very important role in the growth of 
these producers if we have seen if turbidity is more less light will penetrate and less photosynthesis will occur so plants they photosynthesize using the sunlight and they are the major producers even seasonal variation is there so you see certain important marine algae in this estuarine ecosystem that includes ulva enteromorpha ketomorpha and cladophora so these are important marine algae however their population uh, is seasonally variable they present in one particular season and they disappear in the next season okay so followed by the producers you have the primary consumers and secondary consumers the primary consumers are in the form of vertebrates sorry invertebrates so these invertebrates will include mollusks echinoderms followed by the larger fishes which feed on to these invertebrates and echinoderms so they are secondary consumers and you have tertiary consumers in the form of predatory fishes that is larger fishes which feed on smaller fishes or mollusk and the last component of estuarine ecosystem are decomposers or saprophytes so which break down the dead bodies of organisms so these decomposers are nothing but bacteria in the estuarine ecosystem so they are in large number and uh, they carry out the breakdown so they are the recycling members so they break down the dead bodies of organisms and uh, all the organic material present in the bodies are converted into inorganic form so these inorganic components can be further or reused they are reusable by the plants so there occurs cycling of the nutrients so this is all about the estuarine ecosystem so in today's lecture we studied about the two types of ecosystem that is marine or ocean ecosystem what are the characteristics of it and what are the biotic as well as abiotic factor of ocean ecosystem followed by we understood what is mean by estuary so this is the transition area between river and ocean where the salinity is intermediate and we studied characteristics of estuarine ecosystem followed by the biotic and abiotic factors of estuarine ecosystem in the next lecture we will study terrestrial ecosystem so we conclude today's lecture thank you for your patience hearing